Uh, welcome to Houston Newsmakers Extra. I'm talking with Amanda Edwards, who formerly was a Houston City Council member, now running for mayor. And when you announced, you knew there were other people in the race already, including uh, Senator John Whitmire, who's the dean of the Senate, the longest running senator in the state Senate there. He's been in elective office since dirt, 1973. He wouldn't mind me saying that. I've known John for a long time. Also, along with uh, Senator Whitmire was Chris Hollins, who was Harris County clerk, during the pandemic made headlines for his opposition to some of the things that were being done by the state. Those folks, they're there already. Any hesitation for you about who's in the race or were you already predetermined, I'm gonna run, I don't care who's in the race? There's no hesitation at all that I am the person to lead the city at this time. I have a broad array of experiences that make me equipped to tackle the lingering challenges that the city is facing right now. I talked about city finances. Mm -hmm. We're also dealing with issues of crime. We're also dealing with issues of flooding and, and infrastructure and making sure that we have really the necessary investments in our city in place in order to create the quality of life that people want. We also need someone, however, that's going to be forward looking, have an inclusive vision where everyone in our city has an opportunity to thrive. So if you look back at some of the work that I did as a city council member, uh, I started the tech and innovation task force for the city, which then led to the creation of the innovation district. So if you've gone to the ION, right. which is now it's called the ION now, but formerly the old Sears building, mm -hmm. uh, that was a product of the work that we did together, recognizing that we've got to be looking at growth industries and growth opportunities for our city so that we have the quality of life that we deserve here. So John Whitmire has plenty of money in his campaign account already. He's got a lot. Um, so how do you adjust for that as you start out knowing that he's already got millions in his coffers? Yeah, I think it's very important to understand what you need for your race. And so as have had I'm someone who's already been elected citywide and served citywide. So I have relationships, I have uh, work that I can show and point to that align with this role. In addition to that, I think you understand what your race costs and you, you go from there. So far, we've been very pleased with our fundraising. We've managed to raise at the fastest rate of speed of anybody running in this race at this time. So we've been very excited and pleased that Houstonians have really jumped on board to have a leader that is both forward looking, but also has the requisite experience. And when you talked about the fact this is really, it's never started this early before, never. a race for city. Never. So you're just, this, <laughs> you and everybody else in this race. That's absolutely right. Yes, this is uncharted. How unusual is that for you? It's very unusual, but I will say the, the response actually has been extremely positive. So we didn't know what the response would be given that we have midterm elections going on as we speak. Mm -hmm. um, but the response has been that people recognize that the need is here and there is a reason for them to not play, be on the sidelines, but instead really p participate in leading the future of the city. So they want to participate. They, they're doing their contributions. They are trying to host events. They're doing the things that they feel can contribute to creating the leadership paradigm they want to see in their communities. When you, um, you talk about the things that are wrong with the city and what you want to do, crime is one of those things. All candidates talk about crime as being an issue that they'll do to kind of make things better. What kinds of things specifically do you have in mind that can change the dynamic, the way crime is impacting our city now? Absolutely. So there are several things, right? You've got to look at it from a holistic perspective. And one is crime prevention. So making sure that we have an economic development component to this. If people have uh, uh, jobs that pay them wages that uh, enable them to support their families it's a little bit less enticing to go steal that catalytic converter mm -hmm. and so we've got to create systems in a community in place that really cr has opportunity for every single level of every Houstonian so that's one piece the second piece is being smarter with your policing so making sure that we have enough police officers on the streets, that's one piece of this, but then that they're actually embracing that community policing mm -hmm. model where the first time you're, you shouldn't, the first time you come to a neighborhood shouldn't be the first time, the first time shouldn't be when you're responding to a crime. Mm -hmm. You've got to have that presence so you know the difference between someone who's come to do harm in the neighborhood and someone who's just part of the neighborhood. And that's what builds a relationship of trust. And with trust comes smarter and better policing. And so we have to create a paradigm where our officers are, are our officers are well trained, we have enough, but that they're also a part of the community and the community embraces and trusts them. I think if you really kind of look at it from a holistic, comprehensive 
approach to crime. I think what we have to do is make sure we have enough investment there, mm -hmm. but that we're actually doing the right things once people are in place to serve and protect our entire city. Since your stint at the Houston City Council, you didn't run for a second term. Correct. Which is, you could have probably won a second term should you have decided to do that. You ran for Senate, didn't get to that finish line. What did you learn through that oh, process? And so many how things. has it changed the way that you think you can be a leader now as opposed to what you thought you could have been doing as a leader before? No, great question. Um, a few things. So I'll tell you what I learned about uh, in, a, in the campaign world, which was give yourself enough time. Uh, so course correction is, is now evident, right? And we've given, given ourselves a lot of time in this race. But also, in, in, with respect to that, I've been able to see things from a different perspective. Uh, being in the midst of the, the pandemic, uh, seeing what happened with George Floyd's murder and seeing it from the outside, seeing the response, it's very interesting to me to have now have both perspectives and be able to utilize that perspective of having been inside and outside during a really challenging time in our city's trajectory. I really got my finger on the pulse of the community. I, I had it then when I was serving as a council member for certain at large, but certainly have an ability to uh, connect more, even more, with some of the issues that people are experiencing on the outside. And, and, and it's been something I think that strengthened me as, as a prospective mayor of the city of Houston. I'm very excited about being the mayor that not just can deal with the complicated fiscal challenges because of my municipal finance background, but also can deal with what it feels like to be in these homes that need repair after Harvey five years later, knows what angst people are feeling in the neighborhoods, who, that neighborhoods that really need to be strengthened at this point. Mm. Uh, and that gives me, I think, the perspective of someone who can create balanced policy, policy that works for every Houstonian. And so that, for that reason, I'm, I'm grateful for having that broadened perspective. Well, I'm glad that you're able to spend some time out of your busy schedule. Uh, you're still an attorney. You're doing that. And oh, by the way, running for the mayor, uh, <laughs> so squeezing it all in. So I appreciate you spending time here this morning. Uh, do come back. I will. Have me back. <laughs> you, you got an open invitation. Thank you so much. And I'm much. sure I have other folks who are going to want to be coming on as well. And that's fine, too. We'll have everybody come and have a little debate. A debate? I, I've never heard of the Newsmakers debate. I like it. Uh, it's happened before. I love it. But we're ready, ready to do that. So. I'm ready for it. Thank you, Miss Amanda. Always Thank good you so to much. see you. Uh, this is Houston Newsmakers Extra. Share this with everyone you know.